Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Wherever you are, know that God is with you. Our service continues now as we hear God's word. በድንገት ጉርቱ አኖ ንፋስ የመሰለ ድምጽ ከሰማይ መጣ የነበሩበትንም ቤት ወላው ካይ ኦፍ ፌሳን አውቶይስ ዲዮ ሜሪ ዞሚናይ ግሎሳይ ሆሴ ፒሮስ ካይ ካቲሰን ኤፈና ኤካስቶን አውቶን ቶዎስ ፈሮን የኖስ ዴል ስፒሪቱ ሳንቶ ኢ ኮመንሳሮን አብላር ኢን ዲፈረንቴስ ላንጓስ ሴጉን ኤል ስፒሪቱ ሌስ ኮንሴዲያ ኤክስፕረሳርሴ Na bora der e Jerusalem gut friktiga jodeska men from alla folkslag under himmelen heteroid dia klauadzontes elegon hati gleukus memestomenoiesen sie entsetzten sich aber alle verwunderten sich und sprachen untereinander siehe sind nicht diese alle die da reden aus galiläa Как же мы слышим каждое собственное наречие, в котором родились Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. facta autem hac walke convenit multitudo et mente confusa est quoniam audiebat unus quisque lingua sua illos loquentes alors debout avec les onze éleva la voix et leur adressa ces mots hommes de judée et vous tous qui résidez à jérusalem apprenez ceci prêtez l'oreille à mes paroles Estos no están borrachos, como suponen ustedes. Apenas son las nueve de la mañana. Mendeta erda somer sagt ved profeten Joel. Si habe hier beim Schauken in die Hona Lila. Man fasse be so hundu lai afassalle. Wondoch na setoch bijochachum tinbitin nagaralu. Wormasochachum rai yalu shimagliochachum hilmi yalumalu. Mais c'est bien ce qu'a dit le prophète. Et pas qu'à jour tu dis ça na nebe verhu. Iznamenia na zemlia vnizo. Kroif i agon i kurenia dima. Sol convertetur in tenebras et luna in sanguinem antequam veniat dies domini magnus et manifestus. Und soll geschehen, wer den Namen des Herrn anrufen wird. Oh. 
The second reading is from the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Tongues 
of the disciples. They spoke them with confidence and with ease. And those who were outside who heard their native languages were surprised and amazed that now this gathering of people who had been followers of Jesus had now been equipped to be sent out throughout the world, all of the world, to share the message of God's grace. Something happens this day. We call this day the birthday of the church, when no longer was it just a bunch of people following Jesus, but rather when the Holy Spirit showed up, it brought quite a birthday gift. It brought a great responsibility. It gave them the responsibility of going out into all the world and using the languages which they had been given to proclaim the word of God in parts unknown. No longer could the disciples simply sit huddled together in one place, resting on the merits of what they had seen. For now the Holy Spirit had come upon them and was charging them to go to new places, to places that might be uncomfortable, to places where the people would not look or act or speak or live like them, to places of different races and creeds and ethos, where they would have to be bold to proclaim the word of God. What happens on that Pentecost Sunday changes every single disciple present. Because now they're given a responsibility, a gift of going out into the world to proclaim God's love. To not use that gift, to not share God's word in the tongue that they had been given would be to simply be remiss, to simply forget why God had made them followers of Jesus in the first place. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine being uncertain of what all this meant, of still trying to come to terms with seeing the risen Lord some 50 days earlier and knowing that he had ascended into the Father some 40 days later? And now 10 days after that, with everything still so fresh and new, now your tongue is on fire and you're going to be sent to a place that's much different than the way that you grew up under the Hebrew law. All of your comforts and traditions will be shoved aside as you'll be asked to take the word of God to places that you might have never expected before. How's that for a birthday party gift? From the beginning of the church, from its first birthday, the Holy Spirit made the disciples change. The Holy Spirit would no longer let them sit stagnant. The Holy Spirit would move them and send them to places that they could never imagine, to encounter with peoples who they might not never have seen or engaged with before. We've been celebrating the church's birthday for 2,000 years. And usually among this celebration, like we did in our reading of this Pentecost text today, we give thanks that God's word has been made so abundant that it is shared in almost every language of the world. And that Holy Scripture by far is certainly the book that is printed in the most languages. But you know what? It's not just about the word being available. It's what God does to the disciples and what the church's birthday really means to us. It means no longer can we sit still. No longer can we remain stagnant. No longer can we stay apathetic. When we come before God every Sunday morning, we begin with confession. And we confess the things that we have thought and said and done and the things that we have thought and not said and not done. And I'm convinced that when we take inventory of our sins, it's 
easier to think about those things that we've done wrong and the ways that we've hurt others in our actions and in our words and in our thoughts. But what we see on this birthday of the church, what we experience in the Holy Spirit's reminder of this day, is that we are called to be moved. We are called to be shaken. We are called to be stirred, and to go out into the world and proclaim Christ's love, and to actually live it. And although we might think more of the things that we have thought and said and done, maybe today we need to think of the things that we haven't thought about, that we haven't said, and that we haven't done. I confess to you and before God and each and every one of you that when things happened in Brunswick I didn't say or think or do much. When things happened in Central Park I didn't say or think or do much. And when things happened in Minneapolis, I didn't think or say or do much. But if the Holy Spirit is really at work in me, really at work in you, really at work in us as the church, not just Augsburg, but throughout the world, if we're really going to celebrate its birthday, then we have to hear the words that Jesus said to his disciples on that Easter evening in this John text this day. He comes among them even when they're full of fear and he says, peace be with you. He gives them a word of peace. And then he reminds them that they play a major role in that. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. We really need to pause and hear what Jesus was really saying that day. These aren't just matters of let's forgive or let's forget to forgive, but that word forgive in Greek is a fete, and it means to let it go. And that word to retain is kretete, and it means the exact opposite, to forcibly hold on to. As a church, as a people, as individuals in the body of Christ, we really need to take account of what we are kretete. What are we forcibly holding on to? What are we hoarding in our ideologies, in our self-preservation, in our desire to take care of ourselves that causes us to retain, to forcibly hold on to so much that by not letting it go, we might be hurting others? What privileges what words that we speak without thinking about them, what actions that we take without pondering. All of these things matter. And if we retain that idea that we can sit together, huddled, and to not have to engage or encounter with all of the other people that the Holy Spirit is sending us out to live among, and to be sisters and brothers with, then we fully miss what we're celebrating in the church. And that for each of us, God is going to do something different. And the Holy Spirit is going to work in a different way. But what God's going to do, what God has to do, is to help us affect 
to let it go. To let go of all of the ways that we subscribe accidentally and unintentionally and maybe sometimes even on purpose to all of the things in the world that divide us and that cause hurt to others. Across the world, across the street, the victims of injustice cry. And if we are perpetuating injustice in any way, we have to own it. That's what the church deserves on its birthday from us. When the disciples gathered that day on Pentecost, they had no idea what would happen. But what they recognized by the end of that day is that they couldn't go back just to the way it was the day before. I am convinced that all of this pain and brokenness and racism and injustice and hurt and intolerance that we see in this world, in the middle of this time where we are stuck at home and isolated from one another, cut off from community, is an even starker reminder that when we come out of this and we return together to be a community of faith and sisters and brothers in the world around us that just like on the first church's birthday, today we recognize that we cannot be the same. I know for many that will be hard, that we will be challenged to figure out how is the Spirit going to work in us? It is not something that happens overnight. And if we find a solution that fixes it in 24 hours, we're probably not looking hard enough. We may spend the rest of our lives, the rest of the birthdays of the church, recognizing where the brokenness of the world is around us and what we're called to do in the midst of it. Nothing was the same for the disciples after those days when the Spirit showed up and the Spirit called upon each of them to carry a new tongue to a new place, to a new race and engage God's people and bring the love of Christ and proclaim just as Jesus did to his disciples, peace be with you. Their lives would never be the same. And God can do that in us. And God can work in us. God can take a broken sinner like me who hasn't done enough. God can work in you. And this Pentecost, this birthday of the church, the fire stays lit within us. The church of Christ in every age continues to see God's grace. And we must be bold to change. Thanks be to God. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Spirit of unity, equip us to be instruments of your peace, to listen more, and to talk less, to educate ourselves about systemic racism in our society. Challenge us to do the deep work of self-examination, to find the places within and among ourselves where we are guilty of disenfranchising, marginalizing, even exploiting others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Spirit of bold proclamation, grant us courage to do the hard work of boldly speaking out for the safety of our neighbors of color and against injustice. O oh God, we do not do this alone. We need you. Forgive us, yet do not let us rest until we live out our faith by living into your truth of justice, equality, and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Spirit of righteousness, wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy. Here Spirit of healing, bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort. Today we lift up the Roberts family, the Brame family, Jeff Glantz, Judy Carter, Pamela Barney, Caroline and Adil Jamalov, Chris and family, Barbara Wise, Hazel Dubel, Rondi Lodal, Kathy Olson, Diane Gnoyer, Milo Olson, Lisa Holland Teeter, Violet Bauer, Annette Cunningsworther, Kim Weeders, Wayne Cartwright, and all those we lift up on our lips and in our hearts. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Spirit of hope, as you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. We remember Danielle Roberts, Matt Robbins, David Olson, Jonathan Brame, Robert Pingleton, John Hall Sr., Conrad Leip, Marlo Rohde, Arlen Blades, Anna Grace Jamalov, Boots Ogburn, Charlie White, Jane Maxey, Jean Hill, Richard Teeny Chapel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Led by the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.